Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. I think we're live. I'm just going to check and double check that this is working fine. But it's going to take just a second. If you're watching me live, welcome once again. I'm back in Canada, as you probably know, with the uh, background stuff. So comment below, of course, and I will get started in just a minute. I don't know if I find things working fine. Oh, Alice Production has been fast. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, works fine. Good. All right, guys. So, yeah, I'm back in Canada. I want to do a video today to share about Bong Japan and kind of the trade setup I take. I'll show you an example, but I want to go through a little bit more than what I only trade. I cannot teach what I don't trade, but I want to talk about a few strategies you can use on Bong Japan. And I didn't test all of them, of course. I'll share kind of what I know, and then you can do more research on what you want to trade. I'll share with you also what I trade and, and kind of how, how you can do it. But there's a few ways to go about it. And if you guys have any questions at any time, comment below in the chat for sure. I want to go through through three ways of trading with Bong Japan that you'll have to research, of course, and test because I'm not the expert at everything, of course. Uh, that's perfect. Good. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Welcome, C. Carson. So, and wel welcome, Sharon, as well. So, yeah, we'll get started right now. I think it's been really fast. I'm impressed. You guys have been showing up pretty, pretty fast. And sorry for the past few days for not having any video. It's been like really tough with the flight back here, then jet lag, then trying to work and everything. But uh, anyway, we'll get, there's going to be a video tomorrow and the day after and so on. We're getting back on track. So I want to share with, get, with you guys some, some stuff with that. Uh, let me be the, the right window. This one over here. So here's what I want to do. Let me just fix this thing. Okay. Perfect. So I'm on the whiteboard right here, and I want to share with you guys kind of three ways. We have two here. There's going to be another one below. Okay. So there's basically three types of trade. Okay. And it turns out that we can trade all of them with Bong Jiban. So the first type of trade that exists is what we would call a, let's say, breakout trade. Okay. We'll start with breakout. So you look for a range. Sorry for the bad drawing, but yeah. So you look for a range. And you trade a break out of that range. Okay, that, that's pretty simple. Now with the Bong Joban, it's pretty simple because you will see that the bands on the Bong Joban, the higher, the, the highest and the lower band, they expand and they contract. Okay, so they might get to a point where they expand, they might get to a point where they contract, and they form this kind of tight range over here. Okay, and this is what we can trade in a breakout. You know, the strategies about this, I don't know exactly how they work. I've never traded that with success. I've never looked into it too much. But it's possible. Okay, so basically you would look at price going above the Mongjo band, breaking out of the band, and you can look for buying on this. I'm pretty sure if you Google something on like Mongjo band breakout, you'll find something for sure. And that's something that can be traded. You basically bet on price to start going higher and the band going to expand. And I'm sure I'm sure there's way to take pro take profit and put your stop loss on that, like below the range or whatever. I don't really like this method, but I just want to share it because I know some of you guys might like it. You might be searching for something similar to that. And hopefully this can be useful. The second way is basically what, what you would trade as some sort of a trend. Okay, we could call this kind of pullback, trend, whatever. The first one and the second one are kind of similar. Okay, so you look for basically a trend to happen. And this, what I've usually seen on this kind of trade it's something similar to you would have the two bands of the Mongjo band. Okay. And our price would be, let's say, going sideways. The band would be kind of small. And then price would be at the top of the band for some time. Okay. This usually means that price is at an extreme and that there's some pressure by the buyers for sure. Okay. Because price is all the way to the top of the Mongjo band. So good sign here that you could place, let's say, a buy order for price to go higher. And there's a particular strategy on that topic. I'm not a fan of that necessarily. I've never traded that per se. But there's a strategy called the double Bollinger Band. Okay. So whatever. DBB. Okay. It's I, I heard of that by Kat Kathleen. She talks about that a lot. She's been trading she's been trading that a lot. Basically, you put two two types of Bollinger Band in your chart. You have one that is a two standard deviation Bollinger Band. And you would have one that is a one standard deviation Bong Joban. Because that gives you like two Bong Joban like this. And I'm not sure of the rule, but I think if price breaks and gets here, you'll be kind of trading something here for price to go higher. You, you'll be buying basically between those two zones. And I think the take profit is also in those zones, something similar. But I'm pretty sure if you 
search double bonger band on Google or YouTube, you'll find something pretty useful. And you can see if it works or not. I've never traded that, but this is the other way. Now, I hope that makes sense. I'm just gonna check the question quickly. Um, cool, yeah, well, I'll, okay, so I see some questions, I'll answer those a little bit after. Now, the third way, and this is the way I've been trading for quite some time, and kind of the way I prefer also, is reversals. Now, I wanna point out that it's not because I prefer this way that you will have to trade this way. Like, I wanna show all the ways, because you can trade whatever you wanna trade, whatever you feel comfortable using, and that's the point here. I, I've been trading reversal for a very long time, and Bonk Japan has, has been my, my tool to use. Basically, like, like in the trend, okay, you look for pretty much the same thing, which is the band will be like this. Uh, this is the lower band. Price will be at the top of the band. And then, yes, this, this is a sign of pressure by the buyers. Okay, but you look for, for a reversal signal at the top, sign that the seller has opinion. Okay, so you went from the buyer to the seller, okay, kind of. And we can never be sure, but this is a sign that price might reverse. And so you would enter some place here, put this up above the high, and take profit at some time. But if you were to use this by itself, okay, I would doubt on most currency pairs this would be profitable. I would really doubt. And even probably for all of them, I would doubt this would be profitable on all currency pair, all time frame, all whatever. Okay, so you have to put some context around it. Yeah, my cam might be covering the drawing. That's kind of bad, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'll try to put this in the corner here so you guys can see better, perhaps. Uh, yeah, let's get back to it. So, yeah, if you're gonna trade this by itself, this is gonna be quite bad, okay? So you wanna put some context around it. Put something that's gonna make it easier for you to trade, okay? And I see this is, this is kind of weird. Why don't you guys see the whole thing? Huh, what a second. I'll try to, uh, this is, oh, there you go. So you guys for the uh, adjustment on the go, but yeah, <laughs> all right, okay. So here it is, basically, uh, yeah. So if you're gonna trade this alone, it won't work, okay? Because you need some context, what we call the big C context. And I'll, I'll show you guys, it's, it's kind of hard to explain here, but I'll show you on the chart because that would make way more sense and it's gonna be easier to understand, okay? And for, for most of the other strategies, I think you, need some, you, you probably need some context or at least in an environment where it's gonna be conducive to trade. Like this, for example, I, I've seen a lot in the Asian session, okay? Because at the beginning, price is gonna be calm usually and then you're probably gonna have a consolidation in the band and then a break, okay? This I've seen pretty much when the market's trending, when you're gonna, trade and then there's, there's a big trend in the market or there's a possible trend or you're making new highs, right? That could be a possible way. And this one, the context I've been able to use was at some major zone in the market. When price is at some major zone, there's a bigger probability for a reversal, right? That, that kind of makes sense. And if you're gonna do that and look to trade that uh, strategy at zones, it's gonna be way more reliable, okay? So I just wanna kind of fix this Thing here for you guys. I'll try to fix my screen. Well, it's kind of a mess. I cannot see really. But yeah, I'll try to adjust the uh, the screen, and it's gonna make a whole mess for now. But it's gonna get better in a few seconds. Okay, just because I wanna. I don't know why the screen is so weird today. That's probably Canada or something. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, it's not the best, but it's gonna be all right. So I wanna get on the chart right now, and I'll answer your question right after because I see there's some good question here. I think I want to cover this first. It's going to be easier. So, usage GPY. We talked about this earlier in the week on Monday. I published a review where I was looking at all the pairs. I've said exactly this. Price is reaching a major level, 1. Uh, 111. And this is where we've been bouncing a few times in the past. Because you have to be careful watching this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, price at the zone. What I do is I trade on multiple time frames. The forward chart here we have on the left, and the daily chart we have uh, the the one hour chart on the right. Okay, so I've been looking for setup on this. Basically, price went up the zone, went back down. We had no setup. Went up here again, no setup. But in the one hour chart, we had a very nice setup that I like. So let me put this bigger. Price been going up, 
making these new highs. And then we get to this point over here, which I'll draw a narrow to. Okay, this, this thing here. So we broke outside the Bank Japan. We made an engulfing candle, which guess what? Engulfing candle, if you read any book, they're gonna tell you it's usually a sign of reversal. And this is what we had. Okay, so now we combine a few factors and I wanna make this very clear. I wanna like make this really applicable. First things first, right? We had the context. We were at a support zone. Price has been touching the zone and we expect price to reverse at this zone because it's been doing so in the past. We never know for sure, but it's kind of probability this year. Number two, we were in the Bonk Japan, breaking outside the band at the top, which is a sign that the bar is in control. Okay, that we are basically at an extreme point because price should be within those limits, usually 95% of the time. That's kind of an average of, of uh, statistics. But we've been breaking outside and so we are at an extreme point. Okay, so extreme point. And plus extreme number three is the fact that we had an engulfing candle. It's a sign of reversal. Okay. So it's whatever R or E doesn't really matter, but reversal single, reversal kind of sit up here or sign. Now only trading one of those would be kind of not reliable, would be really probably bad, but trading those together is what makes it power of any strategy is the context plus the setup plus the single. Okay. Whatever. So the way I entered this is I entered below the low, place my stop loss above the high and reward to risk three to one because it's usually what I trade. So I, I could like measure it and stuff, but I think it's around something like here. Okay. Doesn't really matter. Now I've talked about this before and I've said that when the price didn't break, let's say the low of a sell setup. So if we don't, do, if we don't go here below the low on the next candlestick, I will not take the trade. Now here, uh, uh, like this is a rule I have most of the time, but here I made kind of an exception because of the fact that the next candlestick was really doing nothing. And I think this was, yeah, at lunchtime, okay? So 12 p.m. Eastern time. And I've seen this as like, we don't really know what's gonna happen. It's kind of indecision. So nothing really happened on this candle because of lunchtime, okay? So basically the way I did is I waited for this, this candlestick when I saw it did nothing, I entered on the next candlestick. This one break out below the, uh, the, the low of the candlestick. Okay, so perfect place to enter a trade, okay? So trade was triggered here, placed the order a little bit before. Now I think it went to break even, I'm pretty sure because of this, if not, it's gonna be close to break even. Now price pulled back a little bit up, then reach the stop loss, of course, but this could be a break even trade I could go into profit. Okay, worst case gonna be break even and best case gonna be a profit. So we'll see what happens with this. But I hope you guys understand the principle and it's not about whether that trade is a perfect trade or winning trade or not. It's more about the process and the same thing applies for everything. We've talked about it before. I've showed you guys some example of those trades also in other pairs, other things. And so I hope that makes sense. But if you guys have any questions, just comment below in the chat. Elon, I'll, I'll try to answer some of the questions you guys had. Let me just go here. Uh, let's have this. Well, I, I've shared this before a few times. I've talked about it a few times, but basically the watch list you saw on my trading view, it's pretty much what I trade. Okay. So all these pairs over here, those are the pairs I watch, except AOD SJD, which I just added there and SNP, which I don't really trade because I don't like how it's behaving. But the other pairs, I all trade. But keep in mind, like they have to be at major zones. So every week I do my review, which I've published on the channel a few times, and I look through the zones. Is there anything at zones? The one here that are flagged, they are at zones. Okay, so AODGPY, uh, there was a good example on JPUSD, which is pretty much at a good zone right now. Okay, so if you go on, just go on a weekly chart, Okay, it's reaching a major uh, resistance area that turned into a support re previously, okay? So really nice zone over here. So I basically do this kind of screening that I go through different pairs, I look at the zones, and then I decide if I wanna trade or not, okay? Based on this, basically if I have the setup on the chart. So that's kind of to answer the question. There was a question here, uh, 
This is one of the smallest profitable M MQL4 code, uh, Oswald. I don't know what you mean by smallest. Do you mean like the less kind of lines or what? I'm not exactly sure. Because you don't, you don't, you don't need that, that much stuff to uh, trade with the uh, MQL4. C can be pretty simple. I know people that coded some algorithms. They're super simple, super short, but they work. Okay, so it really depends. Uh, what pair do you use on Bonkjaban? Cal, I use uh, the basic setting, it's 22. Okay, as you can see here on trading view. So 20 applied to close and then two standard deviation. I had a, 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 someone tell me about this recently about the fact that I could test maybe what, what is the best parameters for the strategy with uh, with with uh, MetaTrader 4, like a script, you test what, what's the best. That could work, I didn't test this before, I just used the default parameters, which kind of works really well. Okay, but whatever could could be useful to back this. I'm kind of curious about which one would, would be best. If let's say 1.5 standard deviation is better, or whatever 27 uh, of period would be good. I don't know. I've never tested that, but that could be a good way to uh, uh, like a good area for improvement. If at some point, perhaps. Uh, Grigory says he like the video. Perfect. It's awesome. Uh, Oswald says. I'm just gonna close the window. It's getting really, really noisy. One second, guys. Summer is a time for people to, uh, yeah, to make some noise. It's pretty, pretty crazy. So here we go. Back to it. Uh, there was a question as well. Let's see. Why buy? We're only the direction. So pending sell and buy smarter. Yeah. So usually, yeah, usually what I do is I wait for the candle close and I will put, let's say, a limit order above the higher or below the low. Okay, so they don't get triggered right now. Unless, let's say, I miss the closing of the candlestick and I get there and it's time to put the trade, then it's going to be market. But I rarely do market. Simply because it's kind of easier to look at the chart and put your entry at a level, like a limit entry, and then you just wait and it gets triggered or not. And you have to cancel after, okay, if, uh, if needed. But yeah, I think in, in trading view, even you can also put a, what, what they call like a good till date or something similar, like a parameter on your, on your trade. So that basically the trade is going to get canceled at, at a date and time if it doesn't get triggered. Okay. So I've never tested that before, never tried it, but it's the same principle as going back and canceling your order if you need to. It's pretty much the same thing. No big difference. Uh, so that's about it. Yeah, uh, Oswald says only our cyber seven indicates the over, the over overbought situation. Yeah, so here's the thing with RSI, like, and same same goes with Bong Japan. I kind of want to make this clear because it's a good sign of overbought, oversold, but at the same time, it's also a good sign of of like buyers and sellers in control. You don't know when the opposite side is going to take control, so it could mean that a trend is going to continue for a long time. Like when you see a downtrend, the R side is going to be very. Properties. All right, I think we're back, guys. I hope this is going to work. <laughs> Sorry about that, that mess here. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So yeah, now I don't touch anything. Good on perfect. Okay, I don't touch anything. I'll just talk and we'll we'll leave it as is. But I just need to go back and see the questions. So I've seen yeah I've seen a question about broker which I didn't answer I think. But uh, yeah I use Rwenda as a broker, and uh, I get a lot of questions about brokers. I'm kind of tired to answer them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So okay to get back to the thing that I talk about like four different times. All the tools, they pretty much they're pretty much doing the same thing. You could use Bongjuban, RSI, Stochastic, whatever. It's usually gonna give pretty much the same thing. Okay, not, not exactly you're gonna get a different single, a different point, but most of the time it's the same principle. They tell you whether it's overbought, oversold, and based on this you can decide to enter or not, based on your setup. Okay, but always combine a few different things together. Don't like just try to pick one and trade this alone. It won't really work. Okay? So that's about it for, yeah, stochastic or whatever you want to use. 
I try to trade reversal. This is see Carson, not always successful. Yeah, so it, it really depends what you use. And like people ask me sometimes, what is the win rate on what I trade? Well, like I can deal for me, but it depends on like how you take your how you take your profit, where you put your stop loss and stuff. But yeah, that's the point. Depends on your strategy and your whole thing overall. And the win rate can be high, can be low. <laughs> Doesn't mean really, yeah. It's it's not really a good answer anyway. Our side is very good for divergence or trend line trend line trend line break. Yeah, of course. If you want to use that, I'm not too a fan of that because it's really hard to call a divergence right on uh, on whatever platform you use to backtest. It's really difficult. But uh, yeah, see a question about forex journal. Uh, as production, you can type on my YouTube channel. There's a video I did about my journal. I use basically Trello, which is a free tool. And I put all my trades into it with this with a picture. I can show you guys here. It's gonna take a second while uh, you guys are here. I'll open this up and uh, mute this one over here. Griffin, this is a great question. Do you feel you left money on the table after you're taking profit? Like I used to think this way at the very beginning of my trading when I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to like catch the move. And yes, like some, sometimes if you have a big move after and you're out of the market, of course, of course, you feel like you missed your profit. But at some point, you just forget it and you understand that the only way you're going to make money for yourself is if you follow the same rule all the time. And even if you have to exit early or later at some point, it doesn't matter. You always have to respect the plan. And that's just part of the process. I can show you guys an example actually on Cat's DHF. Like this, this is a lot of, uh, of profit missed, right? Because... I took a trade, I've showed this before, I took a trade here on the 4-hour chart. This is a 3 to 1, 3-hour trade basically. So 3 to 1 of to risk. Good trade, but then like, of course it went down quite a lot after. Okay, but we cannot always uh, capitalize on those whole moves. And yes, you can put some take profit that are long and that are more more far from your price. Of course it's, it's possible, but then sometimes you're going to get no profit and that's going to be gonna be pissed off because you get more profit. So it's kind of a uh, a trade-off that you have to accept. And yeah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just how it works. <laughs> hey, David, question about GP, GPY. I didn't really like the pair. I don't like what it's doing, to be honest. So I've talked about this in the review on Monday. This is why it's not flagged. But I, I just feel like it's not respecting any zone. Okay, if you go on a weekly chart, it's like, there's supposed to be a zone here, but then this zone doesn't touch this zone here. It's gonna have a big range. And then there's this other high. Like, I don't really like how it's behaving. If if the price were like at a flat line and you would see some uh, some zones to be respected, I would be, um, yeah, I would be more willing to trade that. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. As production, your comment was uh, <laughs> marked as spam for whatever reason. Uh, comment was check your CHF. I don't trade that pair, to be honest. Uh, I don't like how it's behaving. I, I think, anyway, if you're going to trade this, you better trade your USD because it's, it's doing something better, in my opinion. But yeah, it's not a pair I trade. I mean, uh, how, how do you spot the zone? I've did a few videos about that topic. I think it's pretty simple. I can go back here, but for, yeah, first I want to show you guys the training journal, which I opened a few minutes ago. So here's my journal. Okay, as you guys will see, uh, I have a couple. This is some stats from backtesting and stuff that I had in the past. The the app or the website is called Trello. It's free to use. I don't have a link. Like, it doesn't really matter. They don't pay me if I promote the site. So, yeah. But I have a few different boards. I have some, yeah, plenty of stuff. Uh, the training journal I have is my training journal board here. I have it for different years. 2018 is here. I separate the trade like this into winning, losing, break even, winning, losing. Because it depends if trades are good or bad. Okay, and then I have a column for missed trades. And open trade, I don't, I don't really use it. I've put this here, but it's not really useful. Okay, someone recommended this, and this is pretty cool. Someone said you can use like this and put your training checklist here. That's a good idea. So that's kind of a checklist. I don't really use it. But if you are to start and you don't have any checklist, use this and put your steps and go through them and w look at them daily if you want. Okay, so trades are here. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much the, the same principle. You can go back and up and down and stuff. And yeah, 
And when I take a trade, I like to put a screenshot. Sometimes I write a small description if I can. Here there's nothing. But th that's pretty much how it works. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is not for trading. I like guess it's, it's basically me adapting the site for trading. It's called Trello. Okay. Oh yeah, you guys cannot see the top of the screen, but uh, T R E L L O. Basically, it's pretty simple. And if you go and type trading journal, this art trade on YouTube, you'll find a video of that, the whole detail and what I do. It's pretty simple. Okay, it's I've been doing it for like the past two years, pretty much, and it really works well. So yeah, back to there was a question about. Let's see, there was a question about support resistance areas. I've did did a few videos about this in the past. I got to a point where I really kind of I'm, I'm comfortable using those and putting those in the chart. But a few things I found to be useful. Okay, here they are. There's a technique you can use, which is you put a line, and I'll try to, I'll try to open a random chart. I don't know if I have one. Let's say yeah, USDCHF because I don't trade that pair. Okay. So all this online because I used to trade that a long time ago. <laughs> Whatever. I remove doing tools. Okay, so a couple of things that are useful when you draw lines on your chart. First things first is this uh, small tool right here called called Pivot High Low, Pivot HL. Basically, you set a period for that indicator. I found this on TradingView like randomly. But you set a period and then it's gonna show you like the highs and lows. It can be useful to draw the lines, okay? So for example, we see we have this, this, this high, this high, this high. They clearly make a good resistance area. Okay, see we put the line over there. Something like this. Other factor to consider, factor number two, is I like to have my lines at round numbers, okay? Because I cannot in the world remember a zone that's like at 102, like 1.02999, okay? I will forget that for sure. So I prefer much rather put my zones at round numbers and I can just say, oh, we have a resistance area at 1.03, okay? Pretty simple, short, simple, easy, and you're more likely to remember them and to keep an eye on them, okay? So that's kind of a trick I have. And then I'm gonna put some more lines. I see like we have this over here. Uh, like we have this low, this low, kind of this low. So other zone of interest, I'll put in one number, 0 0.95, boom, we have it. And then if we're near a zone, if I see that like th there's a zone coming up soon, like this one over here, I'll usually put a kind of box around it. So I'll try to look at the most recent highs and lows. And I see like these, we've been, to the top here at 1.03 a few times, but we also ha have been like around here uh, in the past, which is, just a second. This is messy. <laughs> okay, yeah, we've also been here, which is like quite lower, 1.01 or 1.016. And we, we went down also at this point. So I'll put a box around kind of the recent highs and lows to make sure that I look at the chart more closely, even when you get earlier than the zone, because I don't want to wait till 1.03 to look at the chart. That would be ridiculous. I want to look at the chart earlier, and that's why I put the box, okay, just to make it easier for me and more kind of eye-grabbing when I look at the chart. Okay, so that's the trick. The other trick you can use, if you really like this doesn't make sense, and if you're really bad at it, is you can use a, t a technique with um, these line charts. You put the line chart in your chart. You, you put the... <laughs> Whatever. you put the line chart in your chart. You put the lines instead of the candlestick on your chart. And whenever you see two highs or lows, or two or three, whatever you decide, two is fine, you put a line, okay? So I would look, to see at this, we touch here, 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 put a line, okay? And then you can make this round number to make it more powerful. So 0 0.99, whatever. And then you see here, like we, kind of touch, I would say this is the same zone as here. Okay, so I won't put a new line. And then you would look on the past. Uh, we touch here and here. And there you after, put a line, whatever. Okay, that's kind of how we go about it. And the lines, don't they don't have to be perfect. I prefer round number than perfect area because I know it's not too far. Like the difference between putting your line at 2.91 compared to 2.92, it's like small, it's only this. And you should anyway look at trades and look at uh, setups when you get closer to the zone, like at 1.92. I'll look for the zone at 0.92, uh, well, <laughs> this is messy. 
at 0.92, I'll look for a trade for the zone at 0.91. It's just common sense. Like you don't wait till last minute to look at, at the trades. You have to be proactive a little bit. And that's why the zones are flagged. Even though price not at the zone exactly yet. Okay, it's an example of that we talked about in the weekly review on Monday. It doesn't matter. I still want to watch because there might still be something coming up. Okay. And that's pretty much the whole principle here. Uh, so yeah. Mihai sa says, I use lines on the same principle. Good idea with the box. Yeah, box are useful. I always use box in all my chart because it, it's, it's just more eye grabbing and like you get a better feel for when you have to look at the chart and what zone it is. Like your USD, for example, is at 1.14 and 1.17. Okay, this is a big, big zone, but we have to watch because we had some instances where price went here 1.14 to turn back down. And we had some instances where price was at 1.17 and push back up okay so we have to watch all between that zone it's not just one line if i were to put the line at 1.17 one at 